So first, let's look at the process of building the ER diagram. The ER diagram or the entity relationship diagram is, of course, the logical model which will finally culminate in our physical database design. So the first business statement or business rule or business uh, uh, situation that we have is that this company called Amazing has several registered customers. And for each customer, we maintain the first name, last name, birth date, street, city, state, and zip code. Okay, so this is fairly straightforward. We can go ahead and create this entity type. Now, I have used the Oracle Data Modeler free software to do this. Okay, uh, you could also use that, or you could just go ahead and draw the entity relationship diagram by hand. Of course, those who are doing it in the pro for the project would need to use Oracle Data Modeler. Okay, for the rest of the videos, I'm going to assume that you're going to use Oracle Data Modeler for developing your logical model. Uh, the main reason being that once you develop the logical model, you will then convert it into a relational model. And from that relational model, you can generate the SQL required to create the database. Okay, so you don't have to write the SQL scripts for creating the tables and creating the primary keys and creating the foreign keys and the, uh, all of that other stuff. All of that will be taken care of automatically by Oracle Data Modeler. Okay, so that's why that's what I'm going to assume and all the diagrams I'm showing have been developed using Oracle Data Modeler. Okay, so obviously you've got uh, the N entity type called customer and uh, uh, we are saying uh, for every entity type that we create, we will be creating a primary key. Okay, so even though the primary key is not mentioned in the description, we're going to create a primary key called customer ID. Again, uh, it's common practice to give the name of the entity type underscore ID as the column name for the primary key column. Okay, and then you have first name, last name, street, city, state, zip, etc. And I've just made some assumptions about which of those are required attributes and which of those are optional attributes. Okay, so in this case, I've said that the customer ID is the primary key. That's what I've shown here uh, by that notation. Uh, and then you've got the first name and last name being given as required attributes and the street, city, state, and zip being optional attributes. Okay, there's nothing right or wrong about any of these things. It's just whatever the business wants. Okay, so in re I'm just making up stuff because we don't have an actual business user to tell us this is what they want, right? But in the real world, what you will do is talk to the business users and actually understand what is required and what is optional. Okay, uh, so here you've got, I'm showing you uh, the attributes and we see here I've got customer ID and uh, uh, for the customer ID you if you take a look you'll see that I've said it's uh, logical the data type is logical and then I've gone ahead down here for uh, the data type and selected integer okay so all our uh, primary key columns are going to be integers Okay. And again, I've selected here primary UID to indicate that this is a primary key. And first name I've said is again logical, but we have said it's a var char. And when you have a character column, that means that it's a character column, obviously it's the name. And when you have a character column, you must specify a size for this. Okay, and I've said maximum size is going to be 20 characters. If you think 50 is required, just put whatever you think is required for your field. Okay, the important point to understand here is that if you leave the size blank, okay, Oracle Data Modeler is not going to complain, right? Because after all, it says this is what you want to do. But eventually, when you go and generate the database script, okay, at that point, you'll run into problems. Okay, you try to load that script into uh, into an Oracle database and you'll run into errors because you've got a wear care for which the size is not specified and that's an error. Okay, so be very careful whenever you create, first of all, whenever you have any attribute, make sure that you've specified the type for the attribute. And secondly, for wear care columns, 
make sure that you have specified a size. These are important, okay? Uh, so similarly, I've done the same for all of these. Last name, street, city, state, zip, etc. For all of them, I have specified an appropriate data type. Okay, so again, the next point that it says is Amazing stores information on several products that they sell. For each product, we store a product name and a unit price. Okay, that's it. So we've got a product ID, product name, unit price. That's all we are going to keep uh, for this information. Once again, it's a very simple, simplistic kind of assumption that uh, there's just one price for a product. In reality, that's not the case. But again, I'm just illustrating something which is really simple. Okay, so now we go ahead and create our next entity type called product. And again, as promised, uh, we've got product ID, which is the primary key, product name, and of course, there's a price. I've just made the uh, simplifying, uh, made a free assumption that price is optional, whereas product name is uh, required. Okay, once again, uh, this is just a matter of what the business really says. In the absence of a business, uh, we just make up stuff. Okay, so I've got price. Again, I've said logical. And this time, I've said that the type is numeric, not integer. Because after all, price is going to be, uh, it's going to have decimal places. And whenever you have a numeric column, not an integer column, but if you have a numeric column, you need to specify the precision and the scale. Okay, so precision is the overall width of the column and scale is how many decimal points are required. Okay, so obviously scale has to be smaller than the precision. Okay, so you need to specify the precision and the scale. Otherwise, once again, you'll run into the same problem uh, that I had mentioned earlier. The next business statement or business fact says that customers place sales orders for products okay and of course we know we've looked at sales orders before we're saying one order can contain several products right in other words you place an order for many different products i want five of this and six of those and eight of those and of course any given product could be on several orders okay and of course it's implied that one customer can place several sales orders and every sales order is placed by exactly one customer, right? So that is implied. It's not stated in our problem description, okay? So now, obviously, what happens is that you've got sales order and you've got product. And we've already said that one sales order could be for several products and one product could appear on several sales orders, okay? So going ahead with... Uh, uh, what we had discussed earlier, whenever there is a many-to-many -many relationship, we always create an associative entity type, right? Which is that this is a many-to-many -many relationship, sales order to product, and therefore we create this associative entity type, which we call order item. Could have called it sales order item. That might have been better, okay? And then going with our uh, earlier uh, suggestion, we create a primary key for every entity type. Okay, I had earlier said too that we will not be relying on key migration in order to create primary keys. Every entity type is going to have its own primary key. Okay, so because of that, we have said order item ID is going to be the primary key for order item. And of course, sales order is a new entity type as well. And that has its own primary key sales order ID. And of course, the sales order is going to have a date, the date on which the order was placed. Okay, so that's what this is. Okay, of course, order item is going to have a quantity. That is, when I said uh, this order consists of six units of this product and eight units of that product, that the six and eight are obviously the quantities. Okay, so that takes care of the sales order. But we are also told that one customer may, may place several sales orders, or at least we inferred that. So obviously there is a relationship between customer and sales order. We know that every sales order may be placed by only one customer, 
right? A sales order cannot be jointly placed by several customers. So that's what we've got here. And therefore, you've got this one to many relationship between customer and sales order. Okay, so that takes care of the model as far as these first three business rules go. Okay, again, uh, you will notice that I have followed the practice of using required, uh, uh, meaning uh, using dashed lines and using solid lines only when absolutely required. Okay, so for example, you can't have a sales order which was not placed by a customer. Okay, you can't just say, well, I've got the sales order. I don't know which customer placed the order. That's not acceptable. Okay, so that's why this part of the line is solid and it makes sense. Okay, and the reason that this line is not solid, this part of the line is dashed is because you may say, well, why do you call them a customer if they have not yet even placed a sales order? Right. So isn't it the case that when you say somebody is a customer, they've already placed a sales order? Well, the point is that you should not have fully solid lines because that will create a problem. Because then what it says, if you place a solid line here is at no time can you have a customer who doesn't have a corresponding sales order at no time. OK, that would be a problem because, well, you may be entering the details for the customer first say, okay, let me create this customer. And then I'm going to go and create a sales order for that customer, right? But suppose you had a solid line right here, right? Then you won't even be able to create that customer until the customer has a sales order, okay? Which could prove problematic. And it'll be particularly problematic if this line is fully solid because then you won't be able to create a customer without a sales order and you won't be able to create a sales order without the corresponding customer that will become a serious problem okay so because of that we use dashed lines whenever possible and use solid lines only when it would make no sense for that line to be anything other than solid that's what we are following here okay uh, of course you this line could have been solid right you may say well a sales order must have at least one order item Okay, and what's the problem there? Because you typically sales orders are created on a single screen. So you will have the sales order uh, basic details and then you put the other details right below, right? So it's not a big problem to ensure that when you create a sales order, you already have an order line, order item on it. But still, uh, I'm just playing safe by keeping this also dashed. Okay, uh, so the next, uh, the rule says each product belongs to many product categories. Okay, so for example, a particular product may be classified as an electronics product. It may be classified as a as a medical product, and so on and so on. Okay, so you say a product may belong simultaneously to many categories. Okay, and of course, a product category could also have several products within it. So for example, if one category is electronics, obviously there are thousands of products which could fit into this category of electronics. Okay, so we model that once again by saying, I've, this is a many to many relationship, obviously. So I've got product, I've got product category. Okay, and that's a many to many relationship. I want to create an associative entity type to take care of that. And I'm calling it as product category membership. Okay, it's just a name I thought that fits the particular situation. Okay, sometimes when you're not able to find a good name for the associative entity, there is a common practice to simply create the name by joining these two names, right? So product, product category could well be the name for this associative entity. Okay, here I'm saying product category membership because it says uh, to which product category does a particular product belong. So that makes, uh, that's a sensible name for that. Once again, going with our earlier recommendation, we said, let this have its own primary key. Okay, so I could have created a primary key through key migration, but we are completely avoiding key migration. 